In this Doc Watt quick video, we're going to look at some questions about Chevy Chef's inequality. Uh, here's a, a question from WebWork that addresses that. Before we look at, at uh, Chevy Chef's inequality, though, almost always when people talk about Chevy Chef's inequality, they, they talk about the empirical rule. So let's look at the empirical rule for a minute, and that kind of will build some things. The empirical rule talks about a normal distribution. Now, a normal distribution is a very special one. It has a particular shape. It uh, shows up often, so it's, it's kind of powerful. But the empirical rule says that if you have a normal distribution, or a nearly normal one, and you know what the mean is, then if you go one standard deviation above the mean, that means the mean plus the standard deviation, and one standard deviation below the mean, the mean minus one standard deviation, then there within one standard deviation of the mean, you're going to have 68% of the population. The area under the curve between within one standard deviation is going to be 68% of the entire population. Moreover, it says that if you go two standard deviations, maybe I could color that in, if we went out to two standard deviations all the way from here all the way over to here, so if you go two standard deviations within the mean, you're going to have 95% of the population is within two standard deviations of the mean. Okay. And finally, if you go out to three standard deviations, you can kind of see in this particular chart that you're going to have nearly everything. There's just a little bit of a tail out there on the end. Within three standard deviations of the mean, you're going to have 99.7% of the population within two standard deviations of the mean. So within one standard deviation, you've got 68%. Within two standard deviations, you've got 95%. Within three standard deviations, you've nearly got everything, 99.7%. Now, that empirical rule works very, very well if you've got a reason to think that your uh, population is somewhat normal. The advantage of, of Chebyshev's theorem is this, that no matter what distribution you have, it could be bimodal, it could be skewed badly to one side or the other. It doesn't matter. If you know what the mean is, and you know what the standard deviation is, then for, for a number of standard deviations bigger than one, you can get the following fact. That if you go the mean plus that number of standard deviations above the mean, the mean minus that number of standard deviations below the mean, then the area under the curve, the number of the pop, the pr proportion of the population between those two values, is always going to be less than one minus one over k squared, where this number k is measuring the number of standard deviations above the mean that you're going and below the mean. That k has to be bigger than one. It doesn't work if it's less than one. But this uh, this rule gives us some powerful tools for looking at things. Let's look at a particular problem. In this particular web work problem, the uh, statistician has already calculated some, uh, some values. Uh, the, the statistician has discovered that if... Uh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong problem. Let me just slide over and grab this other problem. This is the problem that I want to look at first. Okay, in this particular problem, the statistician has already examined uh, some things about a, a population. He knows what the mean is and what the standard deviation is and has made some calculations. Has discovered that if he was down here at 7 and up here at 20, then the area under the curve there is going to be 50%. Now, since he was using Chevy Chef's inequality to do these calculations, we know that the mean is halfway between the 7 and the, and the 20. You can always find a number halfway between two numbers by taking their average. So add those two together, 
is 27 divided by 2. So the mean is going to be 13.5. Now the next thing that we know is that this distance right here had was calculated with that mu. In, 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 here, here's what we know. We know that that yellow area is 50%. That means 0.5. And that's going to be equal to 1 minus 1 over some number squared. All that we need to do is find out what that number is. That will tell the number of standard deviations we are above here. Okay, so subtracting 1 from both sides, this would be a minus 0.5 on this side. We'll carry this out in excruciating detail. 1 over k squared. Okay. At this point, I'm going to multiply both sides by k squared, so it moves the k to squared to the left-hand side. Divide both sides by a minus 0.5. That'll make k squared equal to 1 positive, 1 divided by 0.5. And that's going to be equal to a 2. So k, so that I'm showing all these calculations, k is equal to the square root of 2. Okay. So this is a square root of 2 standard deviations above there. So let's examine what that means. If, if we took... Uh, 13.5 plus the square root of 2, that's what k was that we just discovered, standard deviations, we're going to get 20. So that's going to allow us to find out what uh, the number of standard deviations is. Subtract 16.5 uh, from both sides. That's going to leave us with the square root of 2 standard deviations on this side. And on the right-hand side, that's going to be a 6.5. And so we're going to be able to discover that the standard deviation would have had to have been 6.5 divided by the square root of 2. So now we've been able to find the mean and the standard deviation. We just work backwards to discover what the mean and standard deviation would have had to have been on that particular uh, problem. While we're uh, looking at it, let's look at a second problem just real quickly. In uh, this particular problem, uh, we're going to try and use the Chebyshev inequality, but we know a different set of information. We, uh, we happen to know that the mean, we're beginning in this problem, knowing what the mean is. The mean is 111, and we know that the standard deviation is is uh, 14. Those are given facts in the in the problem, and our question is: suppose that we looked at a low value of 87.2 and a high value of 134.8. We want to find what the percentage is. So what? Now, we also know that the standard deviation was going to be 14. So we need to know how many standard deviations it takes to get from here to here. So let me just do a, a little bit of that quick calculation right now. If we looked at 134.8 minus 111, that would tell us how far it is from here to here. And that amount is going to be a uh, 23 8. And what we need to know is 23.8 23 is equal to how many k times standard deviations, which is 14. So that's going to tell us that k is going to be 23.8 divided by 14. So now we know what the K is, and now we'll be able to find that area. Uh, because we'll just be able to look at 1 minus 1 over this K squared, and that tells us what the area is. Okay, that's where we'll stop at that point.
Hope that's helpful.